guys, it's Gina from Orkden Opal Jewelry and Beads, and I'm here today. It's Friday, September 28th, with another jewelry update. I like to show you guys what I make with all of my beads that I get from the various subscription unboxings that I do, as well as bead hauls. And just to give you some inspiration ideas of what you might be able to do with those beads, I know I always love to see finished pieces from other beaders, so hopefully this will help inspire you. And also I just want to mention too, I do have most of these pieces currently listed on my Etsy shop. So I did go ahead and get those listed. That's usually a weak point for me is getting things listed, but I did actually do that this time. So if you're interested in anything you see here, check on Etsy. If you don't see it on Etsy, just contact me on any of the ways below. I have all my social media links and everything in the information section. So let's get into it. This is the first necklace that I made using a lot of the Swarovski crystals that I had. This pink one, this gorgeous pink bead, came in the recent dollar bead box. I love it. It's so pretty. Um, and I actually had these pink Swarovski bicones from the dollarbeadbox.com. They had sent me these free with one of my orders because they had accidentally mixed up uh, one of my items, so when they resent the correct item, they also sent me a little baggie of these pink crystals, which I thought was really, really sweet. And something that I like to do is sometimes go a little asymmetrical, so you'll notice that I don't have the exact same thing on either side, and also my beads are changing sizes as they go. So depending on how you do it, how you execute your asymmetrical design, you can actually pull it off. So I actually like how this came out. I'm really pleased with it. Um, some items I do, of course, symmetrically. A lot of items I do symmetrically, but sometimes it's just fun if you have, say, one bead that's a focal bead to use that as an asymmetrical aspect to your design. That just takes a lot of playing around with your beads. You know, I didn't just throw all my, my beads down on my bead mat and they just magically came out like this. It took a lot of playing, a lot of moving them around, picking and choosing different beads to really get it how I wanted it. So it does take some time. It's not something that just comes automatically. So here, let me do a little close up on it. So you can see that gorgeous pink Swarovski crystal and the little pink crystal bicones. Now, these small clear crystals are also Swarovski, and they came in my Adornable Elements subscription, I believe, this past month. These other clear beads came in past Bead Crate subscription boxes. So you can see I definitely use beads from all different boxes to make my jewelry. I love combining them, and that's why I love having the subscription boxes. They really inspire me to think outside the box and to use things I may not have just automatically purchased on my own. So going in that theme, I also made one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Might seem a little excessive, but I made five more different necklaces just like this one. I'll show you the other colors, but you may remember in some of my past videos, the dollarbeadbox.com website, sometimes I'll go on there and order additional beads or beads that they may not have sent me in the subscription box that I just like. I like their store. Everything on their site is pretty much a dollar in case you don't know if you're a member or a subscriber. So I had gotten these long beads, these glass beads. They came in five different colors that you'll see in just a second. And I also got these beehive beads. They're called like German beehive beads or something like that. Also glass beads. But what was interesting was they came in like the exact same colors as these long beads. So I snatched up like multiple strands of these because I think it was one of each color per strand for these. I think I got five strands of this. And I got like two strands of these, which also had the different colors, or maybe it was one, I can't remember. But uh, I wanted to combine them and use them in the same necklace because I thought it was cool 
how they coordinated really well together. And then again, I just used some clear crystal beads as well, intermixed there, and a little asymmetrical placement of this silver leaf finding. So I really, really like how this came out. And I went ahead and made necklaces in each color. So I'm gonna show you those. So here's the purple. And then here's the green. And they look really cute on. And then two more colors. I have this really pretty light buttery yellow. And I know they're kind of like spring like colors, but you can wear them anytime, depending on how you dress them. <clears throat> and finally, this gorgeous salmon color. It's kind of a mix between like a, it's got some pink tones and some orange tones. So yeah, I made all those using those strands you can find on the dollarbeadbox.com website. Here they are all together. I love them. I can't pick a favorite. I like all of them, <laughs> all the colors. And then of course the uh, pink Swarovski that I just showed, which is just a little different, but all the same type of style. So then I wanna show you this necklace here that I forgot to show you guys last week. If you remember last, I don't know if it was exactly last week, but the last jewelry update I did, I had made several of these tubular, filled tubular stitched necklaces and I put them on chain, but I used Lucerna bicones. And uh, I think I also used some four millimeter uh, crystal bicones as well. It was like kind of graduated, but I had also made this necklace and I just forgot to show it. I loved how these little iridescent star beads, these are Czech glass. I love how they went with the color of beads that I chose for this netting. So instead of just doing chain on the back, I decided to do some of these little stars and some spacer beads. And then you might recognize these silver beads from a past dollar bead box as well. And I thought they added a nice accent and a nice uh, spacer and kind of contrast between the bottom of the necklace and the top of the necklace with the stars. So yeah, there's that. I also made, this is a longer necklace. This is 24 inches. Plus it has an extender, actually it could go over your head, but I did add an extender anyway. But I had gotten these peacock finish check glass beads, these little squares on the bead box bargains website. They're a really good deal. And I had also found these large square peacock beads that looked almost identical, which I thought was great, on the Dollar Bead Box website. So I ordered two of these and I knew they would go really well with these beads and I wanted to combine them into one project. So I made this necklace here, it's symmetrical and it has two strands. You can see I just added some black accent beads and some silver spacers in between all of those. These black beads here, they came from a recent bead crate subscription box. And then these little black drops came from the Bead Box Bargains website. They had like a mystery bag of black gemstones for a dollar where you got like three strands and that was one of the strands. So I'm not really sure what exactly they are. They seem a little too clear to be onyx, but uh, they're really cute. And then I just added a little wire accent to these. And again, a longer chain. So that's this necklace here. 
And then let me show you some earrings. So I recently created a tutorial video showing you how you could make earrings out of memory wire. So everybody knows you can use the bracelet memory wire to make bracelets, obviously, but some beaters, especially newer ones, may not realize you can actually use memory wire to make earrings. And what's great is that they hold their shape really well and make this kind of teardrop or oval that's really cool. And I show you in that video, just a couple of videos back, how to make these if you want to do it. Super quick project, doesn't take a lot of beads, great for if you only have a couple of beads you want to use up. And there's really so much you can do with this design. The possibilities are endless. Um, I have seen where you can do, you know, wire wrap rows of beads just all the way down. I just decided to keep it nice and open. I wanted to make it a really simple, easy project for newer beaters, uh, especially to give you guys maybe a gift idea, something that wouldn't take a lot of time or resources to do. So check that out if you're interested. And then here's the pair that I made in black. These black beads, I believe, came from a past dollar bead box. They're the uh, black check glass turban beads. And these are some black onyx drops that also came in that really cool grab bag, that dollar grab bag from Bead Box Bargains on their website where you got three strands of black gemstones for a dollar or 99 cents. So I thought they made really cool drops on these earrings. You can see that I used drops on all these. You don't have to do that. I just like the way it looked. Uh, these turquoise beads came from another one of those Bead Box Bargains gemstone grab bags. This was from the blue grab bag. And then these drops right here came from the recent bead crate. And then these are amethyst. And these rounds came from bbcraft.com. So those are the earrings I made. and just wanted to share those if you haven't checked out that video. And I have two more necklaces I'm really excited about. The first one I'm going to show you is one of my favorite gemstones. And that is Dalmatian Jasper. I absolutely love Dalmatian Jasper. I love the spots that it has. I think the name is so appropriate. I actually really wanted to make this in silver with all silver accents, but I ran out of silver toned bead stringing wire. So I've ordered some more and I'm waiting for it to come in and I'm really excited to make another necklace just like this, but in silver tones. I also love the gold. I think it's beautiful with the gold, but my, my first pick would have been silver. But as you can see, these are some of the, the lovely Dalmatian Jasper that I had just shown on a recent bead haul. Uh, I believe these came from Golden Age Beads. And you'll see it on that video or you may have already seen it. And then again, these are those same black onyx gemstone, really pretty chunky drops that I got from the Beadbox Bargains website where they sent you a grab mystery bag of gemstones in a certain color for 99 cents. And I thought they looked so pretty with the Dalmatian Jasper. So I'm really excited about this. I love that stone. And I have one more necklace to share with you today. And this one I'm also really excited about. I'm going to do a close up on it first. And that's because I want you to get a nice look at these beads. These are beaded beads. And I made each one of these beaded beads. I did find a tutorial online and I will put the link to that below if you're interested. I think it was from Preciosa. But these use all pinch beads. And I love them so much that it makes me want to go out and buy some more pinch beads. <laughs> these are the 3x5 millimeter size. 
And all of these pinch beads came from the dollar bead box website or in past subscription boxes. So if you have pinch beads and you're just kind of hoarding them away, or they're in your stash, you don't know what to do with them, maybe this will give you an idea. You can make some really cool round beaded beads with just pinch beads and seed beads. And then you can string them just like you would any other bead on some bead string wire or necklace, however you want to do it. So these were really pretty autumn and copper and fall tones. I just happened to have these colors and I was looking at the different colors of pinch beads I had and I pulled these three together and I really liked them. So in one strand of pinch beads that you get from the dollar bead box, typically they're either 35 beads on a strand or 50 beads on a strand. I had enough to make two. So I had a longer strand of the copper. The copper, the strand that I had may have been a 50 bead strand. Because I think it takes 15 pinch beads to make each one of these round beads. So in case you're interested in that, that maybe will help you to know how many you're able to make. And then these beads here came in a recent bead subscription. I cannot remember for the life of me which one they came in, but they are coppery and beautiful and I thought went really well with these beads. And then I just added a copper, antique copper chain that I embellished with my extra pinch beads. So I had a few extra pinch beads from each strand and I decided I would just use some of those to go on, along the chain to add some really nice detail instead of just doing a plain chain. So anyway, that's what I have for you guys this week. That's what I've been up to when I've had time to do some beading. Lots of fun, fun projects to share with you. I hope this helped you to maybe get some more inspiration on what you can do with your beads. And as always, feel free to contact me or check out my Etsy shop if there's anything you've seen here today that you're interested in. Love to hear from you. Please le leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite items are that you've seen here today or anything else that you would like to say. I'd love to hear from you. As always, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. There's so many of you rolling in. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I hope they're helpful to you. And I'm so glad to have you here as well as, of course, my loyal and faithful subscribers who have been with me from the beginning and everybody in between. So just another thank you. I'm grateful to have you all here. I love beading. I love to share projects. I love to share subscription boxes and hauls and all kinds of things. So plenty more to come. So stay tuned and I hope to see you soon on my next video. Bye guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would also love for you to follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Etsy. Orchid and Opal Jewelry. Thanks for watching.